I'm working the rafters out. I'm putting the chamfers on there that I want to do and the seat cuts and I'm drilling a hole here to run a screw down through. I'll probably be using some of the log torque screws. They work really well. And I've done a little detail with the chamfers and I'll show you what I'm doing on that. And I'm putting an anchor seal on the ends and I'm also putting an anchor seal on the seat cut itself and on the peak. I've got anchor seal on that. The 612 pitch is 26 and a half degrees. I made up my template that I like to use with the seat cut on it and the total length of the rafter will be 5 feet 1 and 3 sixteenths and from the peak to the seat cut will be 3 feet 5 and a sixteenth. I don't know if you can see that but I have my miter saw set on 26 and a half degrees. I was going to cut all of the peaks first and then come back and cut the tails to length. I've got everything marked on the ones that I've already cut the peaks on. I'll cut the peak first and then I'll lay everything out from the peak. The seat cut, the tail cut, and also where I'll drill for an anchor. That makes a really nice clean cut. I'm marking from the peak to the seat, which will be my first layout. It's three feet, five inches, and one sixteenth. And then my total length is five feet, one inch, and three sixteenths. That will give me an 18 inch overhang on the sides. It's going to take my square and square cross set where I made my mark. And I'll lay her down. And I've got my template here. And I've got on the top, I've got a, a mark that I'll line up with the mark on the top of the rafter. And then I can mark the seat cut out. And I've got one more mark here for my anchor, the angle that I want to drill towards the seat cut. And I'll just make a little mark right there in the middle of the rafter. Then I'll turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm lining right up with that mark on the top, on the top of my layout here, on my template. And while I have it in that position, I'll go ahead and square across where I'll actually cut this end off. I'll mark both sides of that, and that'll give me an option of which side I put against the fence. Normally, I like to put the, the top of the rafter against the fence on the saw. Okay, I can set that aside now. And when I get all the peaks cut and this laid out, I'll come back and I'll cut it off for length. I've already cut the peaks on the rafters and I've done the layout for the seat cut and for my tail cut. This is just a square cut. Since I have my seat cut laid out on both sides, I can, from this point here and this point here, I can draw a line across there and connect those two lines. And that gives me something to see on the top side or the bottom side actually of the rafter as I cut this. I can make this cut here with the skill saw set on 26 degrees and just shy of the depth I need. And then this cut here, I can make with a, a skill saw set on 90 degrees. Yeah, we'll see if I can cut this. I said I was using a skill saw, but this is actually not a skill, it's a DeWalt.
and I can take my silky and I'll just cut out what my blade didn't get there. Have to be careful I don't go too far. Now I can take a chisel, a good sharp chisel, and clean all of this up here. I'll give this just a slight bit of undercut from side to side. Clean it out that corner. A little bit of a rocking motion with my chisel. I'm just going to give this just a little bit, not much, of an undercut. That's just about about the right amount, so less, about a 30 second, just, just a little bit of undercut there. That lets this set, both these sides set good flush down on the plate. Next thing I want to do is lay out where the chamfers start and stop. I'll just start at the peak. I'm coming down four inches from this point right here where the chamfer will be. And I'm coming up five inches from where it sets on top of the plate here of the seat cut. And on the tail of the rafter, I'm coming from the seat cut from the outside. This will be the outside of the, the top plate. I'm coming down three inches and I'm coming up three inches from the very end of it. Now I've just made square cuts on the tails. I like the way that looks. And I'll take my combination square. I'll just square across that and get a mark everywhere because I'll be freehanding this, this cut with the router. I won't have my, my blocks up there to bump against. Get all this laid out. I'm not worried about these marks that I'm making on the sides right here because I'm going to come back when I get through with it and I'll I'll sand all of that sand those marks off okay now I'm ready to put the router to it okay the mark that I made past the seat cut going towards the end of the rafter this is the seat cut layout. I made another mark here, and that mark is where I want my bit to come out for the anchor. And so I made a little mark here on the outside face of the rafter here, and I'm gonna make a mark from there to the inside corner of the seat cut. And that's the angle that I kinda wanna go with my bit. And that gives me something to aim by. I can turn that up now and I can get my drill and I can drill right in here and hopefully I'll come out pretty close to this mark that I made. I'm just eyeballing the center from side to side. 
then I can aim at my mark that I made. And try to drill square. And I'm pretty close to it. That'll work. I want to take off this sharp corner at the end of the rafter. So I'm just using my block plane with it set fairly light. And I'm just making my own little chamfer on that with my block plane. Not a, I'm not doing a whole lot, just a little bit, just enough to give it a little bit of a detail. There we go. I can take my random orbital sander now and any layout mark or smudges or planar chatter, whatever, I can clean all that up. I'm putting the rafters together and I'm stacking them over here where I parked a tractor. I've got a, a one by across the bottom here that keeps the seat cuts at the right distance apart. I'll show you how I do that. It's just a simple measuring. And the little cap pieces that I put on with the two pegs, that seems to be working out really well. I've got a pair of rafters up here and I'm putting these together on the sawmill bunks, which they're level and that gives me a nice platform to work these off of. You can see I've got a couple wedges here. I wedged this up just a little bit here just so that I can get this flush before I put the cap piece on. Now that I've got this set here and kind of wedged up so I'm pretty flush there, I'm going to take my finish nailer and I'm just going to shoot a couple three nails in the peak here just to hold it together. That ought to keep it from coming apart. Now that I've got this together at the peak just tacked, I'm going to make sure that my seat cuts are the right distance apart. And I'm just I'm going to screw a two or one before on there just to keep it at the right distance. And I'm just using two and a half inch torque screws. Just going to screw that on there. Make sure I'm not down in my seat. Put me a block of wood up there to kind of support my tape so it doesn't sag in the, in the middle. And I'll get my distance across there. And I'm looking for six foot one and a half, which is my outside measurements of the plate. And that's what I've got right there. Okay, I'm going to pre-drill some holes and run some three and a half inch torque screws in there. that'll hold it for right now. Now I feel just a little bit of a spot right there. I'm just going to take my, my plane and kind of bring that down. I 
it feels pretty good. I'll give it just a light sanding. Now that I've got my board across the bottom to keep it the right distance, and got the peak fixed here, I can lay my little cap piece up here, and I'm flushing it on both corners right here and lining the peak up with the peaks of the rafters. I'm going to take my pencil on this very lightly, just letting the weight of the pencil make the mark. I'm not. This is something I can just barely, barely, barely see. And I'm going to take some F26. This tube is just about empty and it's been squeezing out. On this one. I'm just going to put a little bead. Just like that. Squeeze that down in that glue. Squeeze it down in there good. And I'm just going to raise this up and let that be a little air and back down. Make sure I'm on my marks. Make sure I'm right where I need to be. I can see I need to plane a little bit off of this this part of the peak here on this side. It's sticking up just a little bit. I'll give this a sanding to kind of get rid of my plain hand plane marks if any of them show up down in here or a little bit right here. Pretty flush right there. Feels good. Now put my little cap on there and do the same thing I did on the other side. Just line it up with these points here flush with the top of the rafter and my peak flush with the peak of the rafter. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to hold that steady there. Make my light mark. Just something I can barely see. And put some glue on it. I don't want to get on the outside of my lines there. Press her down in there. I'm going to put two pegs in here and so I'm going to come from this point here back two and a quarter inches and then square off the top of this down to get my mark where I want to drill for the peg. Then I'm going to mark that at two and a quarter on the top side.
I've got my combination square set on two and nine sixteenths, and I'm going to put that on the mark that I just made coming in two and a quarter. Make a little dot there. Do another one right here. And I'll take my awl. I'm just going to make a little starter hole. I'm going to set my point right there in that hole. And I'm going to use my speed square to kind of make sure I'm drilling straight down. And I'll check it again, time or two. Now I'm being very careful when I'm drilling, when I get close to the going through, because I don't really want to blow that out. I want it just to cut it out. And I'll look down here to see where my point is. It's getting closer. I'm going to finish up the holes for the pegs from this side. I just let my drill bit just poke a little tiny hole through there. And I'm going to take a spade bit that's got the little cutting spurs on the outside. Set that down in there. And finish that up. It, I got a little bit of a tear out there. But I don't think that's going to be too bad. It's hard to drill through like that when you're coming all the way through without getting a tear out just a little bit there. For those of you who are kind of new to the channel, whenever I put a peg in, I like to put just a little anchor seal on that and that helps to lubricate it. Now on these, I just put just a little bit at the very end, which should be enough to, to let it go in without too much trouble. And I'm going to let these stick up a half an inch. Okay, now I do have a little bit of a tear out here, but it's on the top side, so it'd be very difficult to see. I think the only thing would see that might be a spider. That's a finished pair of rafters. Actually, that's the last pair of rafters. I kind of like the way that little cap piece up there at the top looks with the pegs in there. Mm -hmm. 